a whole new level of economic uh, considerations in, in agriculture in general and particularly in, in beef cattle production. So that uh, animals cost more. Uh, obviously, most recently we're seeing animals uh, come into the feed yard valued at over $1,500 a head. Uh, these are these are tremendous investments that, that we have to protect. So the improvement in efficiency that we can gain through an implant uh, because of the cost of, of op operations, the operational cost and the, the production cost of the animal uh, becomes a very, very significant number. Uh, feed costs have moderated some over the last year, but we're still uh, up close to the $300 a dry matter ton ration cost. So at, at those kind of, of dollars, we're, we're going to see uh, those, the, the significance uh, uh, of the implants supersized, if you will, uh, because, of the, because of the dollars that are involved. And we're now, because of the shortage of cattle, we're seeing things like Holsteins come into our marketplace where, where we actually have, have the cattle on feed for over a year and we're putting more than a thousand pounds on those calves. And so in, in that sense, we, we really increase the dollars uh, that we can save by using the implants. Well, as we've moved to a, a marketing system today that's much different than we had uh, 30 and 40 years ago, and in that we, we have a very small cash market today and a very expanded uh, beef uh, grid uh, market. <clears throat> so with, the, with many of our cattle marketed on a, on a grid basis, a carcass grid basis, uh, we have to consider the impact of implants uh, on the particular breeds and the particular types of cattle and how that, uh, how that impact uh, uh, affects and relates to uh, the grid uh, uh, marketing base. And so, so there's uh, considerable consideration as to how implants will impact quality grade, uh, choice select, spread uh, uh, being the, being the, uh, the key, uh, how because we do have significant uh, uh, premiums for you know, grade ones and twos, uh, to be able to maximize the ones and, and twos is, is also a, a significant economic uh, base for our, for our cattle feeders. Well, we think it's really important uh, was to maintain a good implant program which which means that we would like to have an active implant in the animal throughout the, the time that they're on feed and most of our data would indicate that that uh, that we can we can stretch an initial implant out a little longer on lighter weight cattle uh, our terminal implant we still try to we still want it in there for only about 90 days 90 to 100 days gives us our maximum benefit so any animals that are going to be on feed more than 100 days uh, and I'd say for sure more than 120 or 30 days, we want to re-implant to get our maximum benefit from our implant. And, and that probably imp improves the uh, uh, actual benefit to us by almost double. Uh, not only because of the time involved, but because at the end of the uh, feeding period when the animals are larger, their maintenance requirements are bigger, uh, their, their feed intakes are larger, their daily costs are bigger. Uh, those, that implant activity and its impact on, on daily gains and efficiencies becomes uh, uh, more of an impact than, than it is any other time.